Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Duran Coles Morning Show with your host himself, Duran Coles, which is me. <laughs> today is Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. Actually, it's today. Yeah, today's Tuesday. Um, let's have an awesome show. I hope everyone had a great, uh, well, uh, this is like, I had a long weekend, so for me, I'm saying I wish everyone had a great weekend, but, because this is like my Monday, which is why I'm so confused about the days, but you guys get it. Let's get into it. Um, if you didn't read the title, today is episode 21. We've been striving and growing, and today's episode is on mental health. I decided to do this episode because um, yesterday I took off from work just to get a break, you know, have a mental health day and get some things done in my own life. Um... And I felt as though yes, I was going to do this episode yesterday, but because of the Super Bowl, um, I just pushed this episode back one day. So I felt as though it was very important to have this episode because even though, even though we, or I should say this, even though this is the first generation that's really, really pushing the importance of mental health and going to therapy and trying to, for lack of a better term, um, get the, uh, what do they say, get the skeletons out of your closet. Um, I still thought that it was important to talk about, um, just to reiterate it a little bit and talk about how it correlates with your physical health and how it's just as important as your physical health. A lot of people think that when, when people say that they're depressed or they they're feeling anxious or they feel like they have anxiety or um any other form of mental illness if they feel if someone feels like that they their moods change a lot or they don't feel like themselves all the time those are signs and those are important for us to to realize and say hey you maybe you should try to seek some help and without judgment it's um in our society today, but especially in the the black society, black communities, it's it's very it's looked down upon, when, or I should say it was, because not so much as as it is now, but it was looked down upon if someone said like, oh, I feel like I should go to therapy, or I need to talk, I feel like I need to talk to someone. If you look at different media, or if you even just ask people for their anecdotal evidence, they'll tell you. You get laughed at or you get looked at like, what, you think you crazy or something? And you don't have to be labeled as crazy just because you feel like you need um, mental health help. Just like, and I know people have seen this online, so it's um, it's nothing new that I'm saying. But if you were having signs of like the flu, if you were sneezing a lot, coughing, you had a fever and you just couldn't get out of bed, you didn't feel like yourself. People would be like, yo, you should go to the doctor. Here, do you need me to drive you to the hospital? Like people would offer their help <laughs> because that's physical health and you can see it. But as soon as someone used to say, and I'm going to keep saying used to, because I don't really hear these um, negative statements now, but maybe they're still happening and it's just not every day in my life or every day in my uh, social settings. But what you would used to hear is if someone mentioned that they need mental health help instead of physical health help, is people were like, just you just need to relax, whatever, calm down, you're overthinking. Or like what, like I said before, what do you think, you're crazy? You don't need to go and air your, your drama out to someone else. So people are, people are like bound or um, kind of more inclined, I guess would be the word to keep their thoughts inside instead of trying to air them out and go see a professional or they seek their friend's help which once again if you if you feel like you had broke your arm it doesn't really suit you to go to your friend and say hey do you think i broke my arm they're like i don't know go to the hospital we're very we're very quick to offer help for physical health it's like yo if you feel like you broke your arm or you you got a big cut, you feel like you're having an allergic reaction, a anything of the, the, that sort, or like, go get the help you need. If it's mental health, you feel like, yeah, I just need to take a break for the day, or I need to need some time to myself, or I need to go, I feel like I need to talk to someone. I don't feel like me. People judge you quick. So, like I said, today's episode, I want to talk about the importance of it how it has helped me taking my mental uh, health more seriously. And I did want to, I, when I, you guys know I always do my research for these shows, I was 
researching the different types of therapies and I wanted to go over that, but I'm going to side against that only because I, I like to focus on what I know and, and, you know, like I'm not a professional. I don't want to give people the incorrect information. So all I'll say about that when the time comes is you can do your research because there are different types of therapy. There's not just, oh, you sit down, like we see in the movies, you sit down in the, the you lay down in a big chair or something and then you just, you're looking at the ceiling and they're like, so how do you feel? Like that's, that's one type of therapy, but there are different types. So that's all I'll really say about that. If you even Google it, different types of therapy, all the different types will come up. So um, let's just get right into it. So how is it correlated with your physical health and why is mental health so important? So first and foremost, it, every your whole body, like works as one. So if your mind is right, then your then your physical body can work right and you can do your day-to-day -day tasks. However, just like how if you have a headache, if you don't want to you don't want to do your schoolwork or you don't want to do other tasks because your your physical body is messed up. You're like, "Yo, I just I can't think straight, so I don't want to do this homework. I can't look at these these t the um, computer screens. I can't study for this test. I have the biggest headache in the world." Um, just like that happens to people, it's the same. It's it's the other way around too. With your mental health, if you are having symptoms of depression, or you just feel like you're going through a rough patch and you're having a rough time, it's going to be very hard for you to do physical tasks. You're going to be like, I don't, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to go see other people. I don't want to um, go to work. I don't want to do these different types of things. You know, and that's it's. They're all the body itself and all your different types of health are closely, closely related. So just like it it makes sense for you to go, oh, I'm having a headache. Let me go take a Tylenol or let me go take a, um, an ibuprofen or something. We have medication. We have things that we can do to, to remedy the, the physical health um, symptoms or of sickness, but we don't really try to find the remedies or take the time to do the remedies for our mental health. So, like I said, it's very important for us to to find those things that work. And some of the things that you can do is there's one, there's meditation. Um, yeah, And it doesn't have to be like what we see on, on TV with the monks where they meditate for hours and they're, they don't speak, they're very silent. It doesn't have to be like that. Like for me, what my meditation looks like is I relax. I play very um, slow music or like a slow beat or something where I don't have to focus on the music, but it relaxes my mind so that I'm not thinking about anything. And then I might, uh, I, I what I used to do, and I really don't do as much anymore. I need to get back to, I, I'm a big colors person. I love colors and those types of things distract me so that my mind can wander. Um... I used to put Galaxy, like go on YouTube and type in 10 hours, 10 hours of Galaxy. And I would put that on my TV or my laptop. I would turn all my lights off, turn on some soft music and just look at that. Or, or I may close my eyes while that is going and just let my mind wander. Think about um, what I do when I meditate is I try to think of things I want to accomplish in the future. Well, for I'll do I'll say it like this. I'll do it step by step. First, what I do is I, I calm down. After I turn all those things on, of course, those are the first steps. I calm down and I just do my best to try to, I guess, plant myself where I am. And one technique that I've read about online that I do all the time is I focus on every, I close my eyes and I focus on every body part. I starting from the top of my head and I go down to the, to the bottom of my feet. So I go, relax, I, I say relax your ears. Relax your eyebrows, relax your eyes. Like, and I, I, while I'm sitting there, I take the time. I don't do it that fast, but I take the time to focus on each individual body part and I breathe. So if I say something like, focus on your eyes, I close my eyes. I try to, I do my best to find that muscle or find that body part. And you'd be surprised. You can find, you can like feel them. After you do it for a little while, you can like feel them and you feel your eyes kind of slouch down and relax then your ears then your cheekbones then your nose then your lips then your chin and i go all the way down and it that take that by itself takes about like 
three to five minutes and I go down to my feet, by the time I'm done, not only is my body relaxed, but my mind is relaxed because I'm so busy focusing on relaxation that I'm, I'm relaxed by now. So after that, I just think about things I want to accomplish. Think I think about the things that I have accomplished and how far that I've come. Um, we can get, get into that later about why I started to take my mental health so seriously. But just I think about all the, uh, how far I've come and all the things that I have accomplished, all the things that I would like to accomplish. I think about the steps that it took for me to get here. And I think about kind of never forgetting like where you came from a lot of people get somewhere and they go like yeah this has always been how it is and I try to go no you you know as a fact that it wasn't always like this it, it took hard work to get here it took steps and then I try to if I'm feeling like down or something during that meditation I don't always meditate while I'm down sometimes I meditate while I'm happy but if it's a, a meditation session while I'm down I'll think about what has gotten me down and more importantly I think about the fact that I've been down before. Like you've been sad before, it's it's okay. It's a it's a something it's a cycle. You can't know happiness without being sad. And I try to just tell myself that being sad or or down is regular and it's not something like that's wrong with me. Um and that you um I'm allowed to be happy. I deserve happiness and emo there is no such thing as good emotions or bad emotions. Sadness doesn't have to be a bad thing like, oh, I don't want to feel like this. You should feel it and you should embrace it. You should embrace it when you when something makes you angry, when something makes you joyous, when something makes you sad, when something makes you cry. You, you should embrace those things. And those are just the types of things that I reiterate to myself. So that's something like that's meditation. Another thing that I do for my mental health, and I don't want to just focus on me, but I'm just trying to give different um avenues you can take and like i said it's it's important for you to find what works for you but these are the things that have worked for me so something like meditation has worked for me taking some time to myself i'm a big as as the show always states i'm a big media guy so i love music i love movies i love tv shows i love watching people like draw or paint so those things also relax me. So I'll uh, tell the people closest to me, like, hey, I'm going to take some time to myself. I'm just going to, like, sit here and relax. So I might read a book, which I will, won't lie is rare. <laughs> but I might read a book. Or what I'm, what I'm am more prone to do is I'll sit and I'll find a new show to watch. Or I'll try to binge something. And that, like, rely, and I don't try to do it for too many hours because then you can get distracted. But just something that takes your mind off of life. And I get very into movies and very distracted when I'm watching shows. Like, I'm trying, I think about e even the smallest character or the someone that's not in the show. Like, someone that got, they walk by them. Like, a bot, for example, like a bodyguard in a, in a, like a John Wick movie or something. I think about, like, how did they, how did they get there in life? And I just, I focus on movies is what I'm trying to say a lot. So that takes my mind off of everything. I'm no longer down or happy or anything. I'm just mellow. I'm just relaxed and mellow and focusing on the show. And that works for me a lot. After I do that, um, do those things. And I won't lie, sometimes my mind does still think or wander while I'm watching these things, but in a positive manner. So by the time I'm done, like a two-hour movie or watching a show for about two hours my mind is at ease and I'm like, oh, I feel a lot better. I can, I feel that I, like I can do a physical task or I can go hang out with people without feeling overwhelmed. I don't have this overwhelming anxiety or this overwhelming depressive feelings. And some, not something that I do, but I see people online talk about some people go and they run a bath and they get some wine and they get some, um, they get like their favorite book and they just, and they light some candles and that's their, method for their mental health and relaxation so you have to definitely find the steps that work for you but finding those is very 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 important it's very very important because like i said before if you don't take care of your it's it's like it's like physical health if you don't can't take care of your mind it will deteriorate if you don't take care of your body you'll get you'll start to get fat you'll start your your muscles will start to uh, atrophy for those that don't know that word, it, they start to de de degrade. They, like, 
you know, if you used to go to the gym a lot and you start to see tone, like you start to see you had toned muscles and your muscles are getting bigger and then now you haven't been in over a year, most likely because of the pandemic. Yes, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> then your muscles will start to deteriorate. It's the same thing with your mind. If you just put everything to the side, you're feeling upset and you go, no, it's, it's whatever, I don't care. And something makes you cry, you're like, I, I don't care, whatever. And those things start to build up and build up and build up. You'll just become numb and you won't be you anymore your mind will start to deteriorate your 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 yourself who you are your mental health will start to um, atrophy so just like we exercise our, our body and we take care of it if something's wrong we go see a doctor those steps are the same ones that need to be taken into um, account for your head and just like I said I took a mental health day yesterday because if I if I told someone that I was going to the doctor, like I have to take a, I have to want to go to a doctor's appointment, no one would say anything. But if I say I'm going to take a mental health day and just take the day to myself to relax and whatever, people are like, oh well, you know you could work. Like it's not that serious. And people try to tell you as a person what is or isn't serious. Not that this happened to me. I'm just saying the things that I've seen. No one said anything to me. My boss was actually like appreciative when I told her I was going to take a mental health day. She said, good. Like go relax. Don't. Don't do something too strenuous and just come back ready to work. Um, which is, I did the opposite. I was working on my house all day. I was very stressed. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I did, uh, I watched an a awesome movie and I got to relax. So I did end up taking the day for myself just a little bit. But I got a lot accomplished and hey, I felt good yesterday. So let's talk about like therapy and the... The, the bigger steps you can take. So those were just the things that I just went over. Meditation. Um, like for me, example for an example, I watch movies or I watch different media. Some people online I've seen, they, watch, they get in the tub and they find their different ways to relax. So those are things that we can do ourselves. But what if it's, what if we try those things and, excuse me, what if we try those things and it's just not enough? Like we still feel down, feel still depressed. I said feel still, still feel depressed, still feel anxious, and we feel like, I'm not used to feeling like this, I need to find help. What can we do? So, uh, there's different medications and all that stuff you can go on, but ultimately to get to those steps, you need to first go see a um, therapist or a psychologist, and then if it takes you to the steps for pills, you'll have to go see a psychiatrist. What I learned, um, no, I've never been on any of those pills, to my knowledge. <laughs> I've never been on any of those. But what I have learned from my therapist is when you when when you do get on different um, um, emotional help help like stimuli. For, I don't want to call them like happy drugs or anything like that because sometimes it's just an emotional imbalance for people. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I think, I don't want to change topics too fast, but just to focus on this just a little bit, which I was going to talk about later, but it's it's come up now. I think people take, like, when people are on some type of medication for their moods or for their emotions, I think society has judged them way too hard. Like, it's something that they did or didn't do so for example a lot of people have iron imbalances right they didn't do anything it's it could be their diet but sometimes they, they were just born that way you have a uh, an iron deficiency so you need to take they have pills where you can take iron some people have a um for their mind they have a serotonin deficiency or they have a dopamine deficiency like they it's it, those they're just all of them they're just chemicals so just like iron is a chemical, serotonin, dopamine, and all those, all the things that go on in your hot, your head are also just chemicals. So you can be born with deficiencies there so that you're more prone to anxiety, you're more prone to depression, and you have to go to those, the, the right doctors, the psychiatrist, the psychologist, the therapist, professionals, so that you can get the help you need and they can diagnose you correctly. But what we do... Same thing with ADHD, like, even even though 
there are some things that can cause ADHD. Most people that have ADHD, most, are born with it, from my understanding. Um, but they, they do say that, like, cell phones and the society we live in is, is kind of like the ADHD society. People can't focus and we're used to um, instant gratification. That's something, like, a little different. But um, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, ADHD or ADD, attention deficit disorder, those are things, those are mental, like, situations that people are born with. So you need, they need to be diagnosed and then they're given uh, either Adderall or some type of stimulant to be able to have an emotional or a chemical balance so that they can focus and they can do work and they can, you know what I mean, accomplish the things that they want to accomplish. I think it's not, it's not productive as a society for us to look down on those types of drugs or type of chemicals, types of pills, if we do the same thing with our physical health. We, for our physical health, we go, um, like I said before, oh, I have a headache or I have a fever or I have an iron deficiency. We easily go, oh, well, there's pills for that. And we just take them. But as soon as it happens, it's like, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling down. And it's been something that's been going on my whole life and I've never gotten the help I need. And then they're like, oh, you should take these pills. If someone finds out like, and the people that start to take them are very secretive about it. They're like, I don't want people to find out I'm on these because I'm going to be judged. And that's exactly what happens. Someone finds out, I don't even know the names of like pills to give. I, I really don't know. But if someone finds out you're on them, people are like, oh, you need those to be happy. You're weird. You're this, you're that. And it's just messed up. So, like I said, I didn't want to change topics like that so fast. But I think that that was important since the, the quote-unquote drugs aspect of it came up. I think it's, I think it's very detrimental to society to not allow people to get the help they need because we're judging them. You know, like that's not, it's not right. So what it, where, where it led to the drugs is when I started to talk about psychiatrists or different professionals. If you can't, if you have tried all the steps for yourself, the self-help types, type steps, same thing for physical health. When we start to get a cold, we take, we'll go get some tea, like we'll get some um, hot tea or we'll try to do things to remedy the situation ourselves. Once that doesn't work, you have to go to a doctor. Once you try to meditate, once you try to get in the tub and light the candles, once that doesn't work, you have to go to a professional. So first, the first and maybe easiest route, and that might be a little biased for me because I was in college and I got a free therapist with my tuition, but the quote unquote easiest route of the three of the professional helps, um, professional steps rather, is first a therapist or therapy. And that that will help you at least air your thoughts. And, and a little bit of a study can be done on you. Not that you're a test subject, but just like how the, the doctors study our bodies and take our, they have to get the, why? Why am I forgetting the, the name of the, the thing that does your heartbeat? They do, they, the, something with a scope, something scope. <laughs> they get, they measure your heartbeat and they tell they put it on your back and say, breathe in, breathe out. They look in your nose, they look in your ears, they look in your mouth. They're studying you to figure out what, like, what is your background? What's wrong with you? You know what I mean? They, that's studying you. So same thing with your mental health. What needs to happen is they're going to ask you, well, how you, and like I said, there are different types of therapy, but in general, from my understanding, they, all of the studies from the beginning will probably be the same. Something along the lines of like, how have you like felt it within the last like six months to a year? Um, is there, just like they ask you, is there, um, in your family, is there a history of like heart attacks or is there a history of cancer? They might ask you, in your family, is there a history of drug abuse? Is there a history of um, depression, suicide, anxiety, anything like that? All, all the things that have to deal with your mental health. And they're just going to like study you for a little bit. And then once you get into like a real session, you might, they'll give you the, the chance to, to talk about the things that are bothering you. If you're like, yo, I'm just, I'm really depressed because I feel as though I've been trapped inside 
because of this pandemic for forever and ever and ever. And I just feel like I'm stuck. I feel stagnant. I feel like my life isn't moving. Everything just feels the same. They might be able to calm you down and say, well, I can completely understand why you're feeling that way. Um, uh, the, this is a this is a global situation, a once in a lifetime situation. So it's definitely prone to get, give a lot of people depressive feelings and anxious feelings and feelings of hopelessness because we've been trapped in this for almost a year now. So, and they they can just you know what I mean. You guys get where I'm going. Like they can lead you in the right direction, and then they can give you bigger um, bigger. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but better, that's the word, better tips. So even though you found out for yourself you'd like to watch shows or something, they can give you better better self-help self -help tips and and they can be the, the person you lean on for help. They might give you their number and say, if you're feeling this way, call me or anything like that. And then the next step, and I'll talk about my, my actually I'll do that now and then I'll move on to the next one because I don't have many, I don't have any experiences with, um, with psychologists or a or a psychiatrist so my experience with therapy and I'll tell you guys like a little brief history on why I even went and things like that I won't go into too much detail to waste too much time but my history with therapy um, I I had been prone for like I, I won't say my whole life but most of my life to depression, on, onset, like an offset depression, um, since I was probably about the age of like 12-ish, 13, I had to, uh, I had to do a lot when I was a kid, like I had, um, I, I had, uh, my mom was a single mother, so it was just like a lot, it was just us, me, her and my siblings, and I got my own, like, job since I was, I've, had, I've been working since I was 11, yeah, I got my first job when I was 11. Um, I was it was just working like at a at a local barber shop. I was sweeping the floors, and I was making like good money and stuff. That that's irrelevant. But I, it wasn't like oh he was making twenty dollars a week. I was making like like three hundred fifty dollars every week. I, I was an eleven year old, so and I did that for a year and a half. I had a lot of money when I was when I was that young. So I had to work a lot. Um, I had to help out like with, with my mom like when I could. It wasn't anything too crazy. Help help out with my my siblings. I had to watch my sister like a lot, and I wasn't happy with the things I had to do. I feel like I felt like kids around me were able to do more or had more, and they didn't have to work. They didn't have to um, act like I felt like they had more things than I had, and I felt like um. I couldn't really go to anybody for help because I knew my mom was already trying to do the, th you know what I mean? Like she already had a lot on her plate, so I didn't want to put more on her plate. And that's on me. And we, she and I have talked about all this before. And she said, I should have asked for more help, which, and looking back, I definitely should have, but I, I became very reclusive, very to myself. And I tried to live like six, seven, eight different lives. I tried to show like one face to my mom, another face to my friends, another face to my teammates when I was a sports athlete another face to like relationships but then I would go home and I would just be very angry all the time I hated everyone like and that this happened for years and years and years and years um so and then I got into like relationships when I was older like 16 and so on I got cheated on in relationships um then I got and then I went on to, uh, then when I was like 17, I I moved out my, my mom's house to, so I could keep going to, she she, we, she moved like to a different area and I could have gone like with them, but I didn't want to go to school in that area. So I stayed with friends and then family and then like I had to keep moving. I moved like five or six times my senior year of high school. So... It was, that was a lot. Then I went to college. I went to two hours away from home, and from where I come, where I came from, it was uh, it was very like everyone around me looked like me. There wasn't much diversity. It was everybody around me looked like me. They acted like me, and it was it was simple. 
and I was looked at as like very smart and I never really had to get humbled at all. People always came to me for information, not really the other way around. When I got to college, it was very diverse. There was so many people around, so many different opinions. Um, I would try to bring my like input to the table and I would get questioned a lot, which I was not used to. I was, um, I always like to say that there's a difference between the way you grow up and the way you're raised. I was raised to be gentle and nice to everybody and stuff like that. But the way I grew up, I was raised to always look over your shoulder. I wasn't raised to, I mean, I didn't grow up to be violent, but I grew up with a temper. I didn't want to be tried. Try me if you want to and you'll see what happens was kind of like my mentality. So, and I, I kind of developed a very quick temper which I blame my mom for. My mom had a quick temper. So I have, a, I have a very quick fuse and a very quick temper. And if something I don't like happens or if I feel disrespected, I, and I'll say that, I mean, this is kind of still true a little bit. I'm still working on it, but it's more so the past now, really. But um, I had like basically had a quick temper and just a lot of anger issues. So when I got to college, people would question me on things and I would get very angry just in like conversations um, they question my belief systems or question the things that I felt were okay. And they'd be like, yo, that's not okay. And I'm like, would you disrespect me? You won't fight, blah, blah, blah. Like, I was very angry all the time, always trying to start something if I felt like people disagree with me. I wasn't very open, not anywhere near, not even as close as open mind as I am now. Like, it's two, two different spectrums, two different sides of one spectrum. So, and then, like, later on throughout college, went through different relationship stuff. It, um, and I basic, basically what my main issue was, was I was already always seeking kind of like, I guess, validation, always seeking somebody else's like love, wanting to feel needed. I always wanted to feel wanted rather, not needed, but wanted. So I always jumped in and out of relationships because of that. I was in for like, for like... I don't even know that I used to know the number. I don't know anymore, but like five or six years straight, like for like six years straight, back to back to back to back to back. I was in like four relationships and I, I hadn't been single for like six years because I was always looking for that attachment, for that wantingness of someone, someone to want me. So basically I went to my therapist with all of this like backstory. Obviously I went more into detail with him and, um, and he just gave me a lot of, uh, he gave, he, first and foremost, he, he broke a lot of things down to me, a lot of things down of why I did the things I did based off my past, how I could, how I could help myself going forward, gave me a lot of tips for my anger, a lot of them, which I don't seem to, to me, I don't, I don't act like as angry anymore. My cousin begs to differ sometimes, but. I don't act anywhere near as angry anymore unless I feel like I'm in an uncomfortable situation or I feel like I have to be that way. Like when I'm not, not that I can't be myself because that's the old me, but when I feel like I said, when I feel like I'm being disrespected, I feel like I'm being tried. Very quick story. I worked at Amazon for a little bit. I'm used to, I, I'm used to like corporate, corporate jobs, corporate situations. You get to sit in an office. Everyone has that smile and they, they talk like how they talk in emails and stuff. Um, and where I originally come from, we don't like, we don't really do that. We don't really do corporate, anything like that. I, I kind of, kind of got a uh, doc, uh, I don't know the word blossomed into that through college. I got different internships and things like that. I want it better for myself, but where I, where I grew up at, we don't, we don't do that. It's not, it's not how it went. <laughs> so basically when, when Corona happened, and my college shut down. I had to go when I, I had to go work at Amazon to go make some money. And at Amazon, there is no corporate world. Everyone is like like from where I grew up from. It's it's a little ghetto. It's a little. It's a lot. <laughs> so I at first I definitely just went in there like myself. I went with the corporate approach, whatever. But I felt as though people tried to look down on me or like looked looked at me as like oh he's a little kind of like a little kid or like a little boy that can be messed with and like I just said 
prior, I don't really tolerate or like disrespect. I don't like to feel as though people are looking at me like that. So when I feel that way, my I turn into a different person. <laughs> that is what I, that's what I'll say. And it's not like that's me not acting like me. That's just the negative side of me, which I'm still working on. But I don't like to feel that way. So it makes me yell. It makes me angry. It makes me a different person. So I kind of built, pretty quickly, I built a reputation of like, oh, that's a nice kid and all. Just don't, just don't say the wrong thing to him. Or don't, you know what I mean? Like that was kind of my reputation in there. I was maybe every, like, every other week I was in there arguing with somebody or snapping on somebody. I may or may not have told this one bodyguard that I was going to dunk him on his neck if he kept disrespecting me. That may or may not have happened. But neither here nor there. Um, I went to my therapist like with all of this. And he gave me a lot of a lot of self-help tips on how to reduce my anger, how to flip my switch, like my how to reduce the the time in which my my switch flips. It, it takes a little and it takes a lot more for me to get angry as well. Like I said, unless I feel like I'm being disrespected or looked down upon, I, I really don't care. Like a lot of people get angry when people say things that, about them on social media or thing. I, I don't care about the way people judge me. I've never. I've never cared about that stuff. I'm on too much of a mission to think about what other people are thinking about me. However, if I'm in my place of work and people are coming up to me, bothering me, and you know what I mean? Like, then I snap like, yo, like, why is, I got to work here. So I need you to know that I, you're not going to just come in here and mess with me when I have to work, male or female. I'm not going to hurt you. Like, I'm not going to get arrested for you, but I'm not just going to tolerate disrespect either. So... My time with therapy, he made me really realize all the, the skeletons I have in my closet. He helped me get them out and bring them to the light. He helped me have a lot of hard conversations with myself. Hard, a lot of hard conversations with my family as well. A lot of things I've kept inside for a long time. So I had to like, kind of like just clear the air. And that has made me progress very heavily. Like I used to kind of have kind of have like a something over them I don't know how to describe it but like like this this feeling in the back of my head like ugh you know what I mean then I aired to clear the air and me and my family have been like really closer than ever so there was that he helped me with relationships he um helped me with a lot and I personally didn't need to go to the next step, which would have been a psychologist, which I believe, I don't know if that was him or someone or the other lady. He, there was um a, a, another lady that helped us, like helped us as well because my therapist like was a, a white male. So he helped me with like a, a lot of um like things with like being a man and growing up or whatever. And then he, we brought in um, a black female and a black woman and he, she helped me like with a lot of like traversing college and and being new to like new to all this. This is this was new for me. So to be a black man trying to traverse college for the first time, uh, first generation like college student. No one ever told me about going away to college. I wasn't even supposed to go to college, so it was very hard for me to traverse that that new terrain. So. Like I said, with all that help, I didn't have to go to the next steps, which would have been a psychologist. And with a psychologist, now they they have, um, like I said, I don't I don't want to speak on things I'm not too knowledgeable about, but from what from my understanding, with a psychologist, they have different methods and different things to be able to analyze analyze the way you think and why it is the way you think that way. And they can go back into your childhood and say, this thing correlates with this thing. And your, your, what's the word I'm looking for? Your, um, oh, so your subconscious thoughts, things that, that you're thinking or doing without think, without even realizing it, your subconscious thoughts are actually correlated to this thing that happened to you in the past or this, this, the way that you look at 
the, the society or the way you, you look at these things correlates to what happened in your past or this. They can psychoanalyze you, analyze the, the way you think, and then try to help you. Like, okay, um, let's clear let's clear this thing in the, the past first or clear, um, or let's talk about that so that we can go forward. Um, and then the next step would be a psychiatrist. Now, a psychiatrist can do the same thing that a psych psychologist can, but the psychiatrist is now is able to rec um, write you scripts or write you uh, medication. They can write you like pills and things like that. So if they feel as though you need to go to that next step, like, hey, this person has a chemical imbalance or they, they you know what I mean? Like um, anything, anything that might require medication from their expert knowledge like the way they look at things then they will they can write you a script for it so that is like the the next three professional steps so if you it's kind of four steps if you if you're having mental health issues and you try to do self-help and then you go oh, i need a therapist they might then re recommend you so you should go to a psychologist and then a psychologist might recommend you you should go to a psychiatrist and then, I mean, I guess the last and final step, and this is a joke, don't take it too seriously. Last and final step is if you can't get any help from there, they might send you to the to a psych ward. And then they might strap you up and leave you there. If you can't get any help with those four. So, um, that is like my experiences with mental health. That Those are my tips with mental health. Um, I think 100% people need to take it way, way, way more seriously than they do. I know that, like I said in the beginning, we are the first, this is the first generation that has really pushed the importance of looking after yourself and taking your mental health seriously. It's just as important as your physical health. Do not forget that. So just to reiterate a little bit before I go into the questions aspect of the show, the recap, we talked about the things that finding what will help you, um, with your mental health there you need to have some form of self-help it doesn't need to be meditation even though that i highly recommend meditation it does and once again it doesn't have to be like the monks where you need to sit there and go oh that's not what i do and if i did that i wouldn't be able to focus i've actually tried doing that before it doesn't work for me i hate it you can do your own form of meditation and it doesn't have to be for an hour either there, the shortest time that I could that I've meditated is maybe like five minutes. You maybe some people have done shorter. The longest time I've meditated is like like an hour or two. And I just sit like I sit there for hours and just think and think and think and just relax. And for me, meditation means a lot to different people. For me, my meditation helps me stay on my path. I have a lot of things I want to accomplish, and I can go off of that path easily because of distractions or because of my mental health. I can go, ugh, this is too hard or this is that or uh, maybe I'm not ready for this. You know what I mean? So I meditate and I go, this is what you, you're ready to do it. And I keep myself on that path, keep myself calm, cool, collected and ready to work. Other people, they might not want to think at all while they meditate. They might do their best to think of nothing. I think about and this is its own conversation. I'm not going to go too deep into it because I want to get to the questions. But I think mostly about how everything, there's going to be life here. There was, there was life here way, way, way before me. And there's going to be life way, way, way here after me. So it doesn't, it doesn't help me to stress about really. And I, I'm not really a, a religious person, but I think we can all agree whether you're religious or not that we don't really have... A lot of control we don't have as much control as we think we do regardless time is going to keep moving and the world is going to keep revolving whether we like it or not so I think don't while those things are going to continuously happen we should do our best to remain happy during it so I just try to ground myself and remind myself of that calm down breathe the earth is still going to revolve and time is still going to move forward whether I'm here or not here or a hundred hundred years after me. Things are going to keep moving forward. The earth, the, the world is 13.8 billion years old. So, um, 
finish off the recap, you need self-help tips, and then you need to know what avenue you need to take, whether it be therapy, psychology, or a psychologist, or a psychiatrist. But you can't just jump to a psychiatrist. You need to go to a psychologist first. So that is my mental health talk. This was episode 21. Let's open the floor for any questions. Um, I don't have any questions, but I do just want to say, like, in case anyone is still, like, in the first stage and trying to find out things for themselves, you can also Google um, mindfulness techniques, and that'll just give you um, a couple different ways that you can try to be, like, aligned with yourself and focus on your thoughts. So just to give, like, a few examples, um, that can look like journaling, that can look like adult coloring, Um, It could look like just sitting for five minutes in silence to focus on um, the day or any thoughts that you're having. So it can really look different for anyone. But um, like I said, if you want to know more about that and just find out different techniques, um, you can look up mindfulness techniques and it will give you a list of different things that you can try um, if you haven't quite found something that works for you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um... Like she just said, sitting in silence, that might work for some people. I cannot sit in silence unless I, and this this may sound weird to people, maybe someone out there is going to reflect and be like, that's me. But I cannot sit there in silence unless I don't know that it's silent. As soon as I realize that I'm sitting in silence, like my brain kind of clicks and I go into a panic mode. And I don't actually start like flailing and panicking, but my brain and unless I tell it to like shut up and calm down, my brain literally just starts to go, it's quiet. You know, it's quiet, right? You know, it's quiet in here. It's quiet. It's quiet. Why is it so quiet? It's quiet. We should turn on some music. It's so quiet. My brain starts to go so fast. So I, that's why I can't meditate in silence either. I need there to be like some background music or something. Um, I have a meditation playlist and it used to also be my studying playlist for college. So I've heard all of those songs so many times that when they're on, after they're playing for about, if I'm sitting there and I'm meditating, after they're playing for about two to three minutes, I don't even hear the music anymore. Like, if someone came in and told me music was playing, my brain would have to kind of snap out of it and go, oh crap, I, I didn't even realize I was playing music, I forgot. But it helps with my my whole silence thing. Um, so that's my spiel. Um, so let's go attack the day. I want everyone that's listening out there, whether on social media or on YouTube or on if you're a live listener, first and foremost, thank you for watching the Duran Coles Morning Show. This is episode 21. You can follow me everywhere at the Duran Coles. Secondly, take your mental health seriously. Take the time you need to look out for yourself. And also remember that you came in here with you and you're going to leave with you. I know, and this is one thing my therapist um, reiterated to me, which is why I do my best to reiterate it to everyone I can now. I know we are a, let's just call it people to people or person to person society. We love to help people, but you won't be able to help anyone if you don't help yourself. And that's just the biggest fact in the world. We don't look, we always look out for other people first and then we look out for ourselves And it really, really can add up and hurt you. So go look out for yourself. Go attack the day. And I will see you here tomorrow. All right? Peace.